Hi. <laughs> My dogs just like don't understand why I'm talking to a camera and they think somebody's here. Um, yeah, settle back down. This time, this week, they don't have a chew bone, so hopefully it won't be something that's loud and distracting. Um, but now I think he might start barking because he's looking out the window for the person that I'm saying hi to. Anyway, hello, I'm back again um, with another episode this week. My name is Amy and I'm the indie dyer behind Pancake and Lulu Yarn. And um, this is my fifth episode. I'm so excited to be back and I just have come to really look forward to this little time each week. So I wanna thank you guys so much for, for being there, um, for watching and, and for subscribing. I can't believe I have over 100 subscribers. It happened so, it seemed fast, I don't know if it really is. I mean, I think a lot of them are probably family members, but it, it really means a lot to me. Um, so if you are enjoying the podcast and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because it really is an easy way to help um, get the video kind of, I think they circulate it more on YouTube if you have a larger number of subscribers. So um, just take a second to, to, to hit that subscribe. It doesn't really, you know, you don't have to watch it if you don't like it, but um, it's an easy way to help uh, promote the podcast. So thank you. I have a finished object this week. I finished my Every Bit Cowl and I'm so excited I finished it in, I think it was exactly one week that I did it. And I have to say that, um, it was a fairly quick knit, but I think that it was because I knew that I was going to be podcasting. Um, I thought, ooh, what if I could put a deadline for myself to finish that before the next podcast? And so I did it. Thank you. It's because of you guys that I pushed myself to finish this. And um, it's just so satisfying to finish things quickly because there's just so much that I want to knit. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is the Every Bit Cowl by Telly Bean Knits. We still, I believe, there's still a coupon code through March um, for 50% off of this pattern. I will put the code for that down in the down bar. Um, this was a really fun, fun pattern to knit. It had, um, it has lots of different sections or a few different sections. Um, it's a one skein project. Each section is, let me get closer. Um, really interesting but not too long either so there's just a really simple section this part actually I feel like I just pulled that in because I don't know how to wear it out it kind of flops strangely so I'm not sure um the shape of the cowl is like a very typical cow this line here I just noticed is from when I blocked it so I could sort of probably steam that a little bit to get that line out because I had to fold it because it's one piece let me take it off it's actually really warm too. I was wearing it around the house after I made it and I was like, wow, this is really nice to have that little bit of extra warmth right there. Um, actually, the weather is strangely warm today anyway, but this is the cowl and it's gorgeous. There's some interesting stitch patterns, the cable, and then this pretty, it's like a, a lace, wait, no, where are we? This is, these are just two interesting kind of, well, this isn't really a lace. I don't know. It's just a knit, knit and purl pattern. Um, and then there's a little lace work and the ribbing. And then I added the bobbles on the end to, fi to finish it. It was just, the pattern has it just end in a rib. And I just felt like it needed something. I felt like it needed a little something fun. And I haven't done any of the recent projects with bobbles that a lot of people have been doing. Um, so I was kind of curious to see if I could find a bobble bind off and it was not easy. I actually tried for a couple of hours on Sunday morning, um, yesterday morning, I'm recording this on Monday. Yeah. So I, I looked for a couple of hours for the right. I have several books. I have a great book collection of knitting books that I've been collecting forever. Um, and I could not find a bobble bind off. I could find a bobble cast on. I could find how to do bobbles, um, but I wanted it to be something that would be right along the edge like that. So finally, searching on the internet, I did find some written instructions for a bobble bind off. Um, so I 
did it and it worked and I just kind of winged it as I was going. I think maybe if I were to do it again, I might have, I mean, this is very nitpicky, but I think I might have the bobbles kind of end at the end of this rib part. That's the, the knitting stitch. Instead, they kind of go, go right in between. They go right in between and end where the kind of the pearl part of the rib is. Not that it, I really don't think it matters, but if I were doing it, like if I were designing the pattern, I might do that. I did a bigger bobble right in the middle of the peak at the bottom and doing bobbles is really fun. I actually filmed a little like three minute tutorial of how I did the bobble bind up. So I will insert that um, into this video. I guess I should, I can insert it right here. Um, so I'll insert it here and you can see this little tutorial that I did. So you start out by knitting one stitch over to your right needle. Then you're going to leave that stitch there the whole time. You're going to knit five stitches into the next stitch. And you do this by knitting one, yarn over, knitting one, yarn over, knitting one into the same stitch. Then you turn. Then you're going to purl in purl each stitch. The second stitch where I did the yarn overs, I actually purled into the back of those stitches. But then I realized you really didn't have to do that. It didn't make the bobble look any different. Um, so you can just purl those five stitches back. If you want to try that and see if you notice a difference, leave that one stitch still there on the right needle and you've turned it back to the right side. Then you knit those five stitches again. You're creating a little flap in stockinette with those five stitches. Turn and purl those stitches again. So we're just knitting back and forth Then the very last time, we're gonna knit those five stitches once more. Just remember all along you have that one stitch that's kind of the first stitch is extra. You don't touch that the whole time. You're just working with these five stitches. Okay, then once I've knit these five stitches, I've created a little flap with a one sort of stretched out stitch before it. Then I cast off these stitches by passing each one over the first stitch, if that makes sense. So you're just casting, you're binding off is a better way to say it. Then you bind off that original first stitch. So you've created a little gather gathered area there and that's created the little bobble. Then I bind off the next three stitches from my left needle. You can see it's starting to form. That first one you can kind of pull a little bit tight to cinch it down. And then you do the second one and the third bind off. That's creating the little space between the bobbles along the edge. Then you can press the little bobble out and there it is. I like the way the other side looks too. So I'm gonna do the next one a little bit faster. Okay, I'm back. I hope that was informative for you. I found it, um, I also bookmarked the page, which I will put, um, the page with the written instructions, which I will put in the down bar below so you can see how I did it. I think I actually put the, 
I put the link on my Ravelry page for, for where I found out how to do it because I think it looks really pretty. It really reminds me of almost like armor or something. It's just so intricate and beautiful and seems very, um, I don't know, classic in a way. I actually thought when I was, I love this, this yarn um, color. This is the cappuccino colorway in my ply DK. And I really love the way it has the different, I think I talked about this already though, um, the different shades in it, even though it's a solid, semi-solid I call them because they're, you know, there are a lot of little speckles. It's got little speckles of reds within and orange. Um, and I was actually thinking when I was knitting this, I usually knit in bright colors. Like I love colors so much and I usually tend to like to combine interesting colors. So I haven't really knit I don't think I've knit like a one color project in a really long time. And I was thinking, I wonder if I'm really gonna wear this. And I really think I will. I mean, I think this is a great classic piece to go with, you know, a black coat. And I just think um, it's a very useful little thing to have. Um, I think it would be, be a great gift as well. So, and it only took me a week, which was awesome. The picture, without the bobbles has a little more of the ribbing at the bottom. I just liked the way the bobbles added that decorative edge. It's almost like a necklace. Um, I did have some left over and that is because I wasn't sure, it's not very much, but it's called the every bit cowl. And the idea is that you, she really tells you how you can use every bit of the skein, but that's with the normal bind off. And I thought, I have no idea. I know Bobbles use a lot more yarn, so I didn't know how much to leave for that. So I just wanted to be safe. So I started, um, I started the Bobble row. There, she has her instructions. The last section, it's like an eight, I think it's eight rows of this rib. And then she says, repeat the eight rows until you have X amount of yarn left, which is what you'll need for binding off. Um, but I, did eight rows and then I did one more row. So I did, I repeated it uh, just the first row again. And then that's when I thought of doing the bobble. So I was like, I'm just gonna do it now. And it's great, I'm excited. I think it's big enough. It could be a tiny bit bigger. I mean, I could have done maybe, maybe one or two more rows, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. And yay, I have a finished object. Um, so that that is my big accomplishment. Um, knitting related accomplishment. I still have some works in progress though. So um, I guess that's all That's all for my, my finished objects, but that's pretty good. Like I'm, I'm happy to have any finished object, even if it's not a huge project. Um, so my next project um, that I wanted to show you, oh, so I'm still doing the two pairs of socks, um, the dragon fruit socks. I can show them, but I think that I haven't worked on them since I showed them before. I don't think I showed them last week, but I really set these aside so I could work on my other socks. Um, I really don't have much more of this sock to do. It's kind of daunting thinking that I have to do another sock after this. And I have another pair of socks on the needles. So I really need to get going. I feel like I'd like to finish those, but I'm so into these. Um, this is the other thing that I've been working on this week. I haven't gotten that far because I've worked on, well, I'll show you the other, uh, the other um, project that I started, but here are my Be Mine Valentine socks with the yarn by, sorry, this is not very pretty because it's all crushed. Um, it's in this bag that goes with my purse. It came with my purse. I have one of those MZ Wallace purses. My mom actually got it for me for Christmas. And it comes with this bag that is just perfect for carrying around a little project. So it matches my purse and it fits right in the purse and I just love it. Um, so my Be Mine socks, um, these are my mustache yarns. The, the, um, the yarn is my mustache. The pattern is the Trusty Toe Up Sock by um, Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, and I, I'm having so much fun. I'm so excited. I, I'm doing an afterthought heel, so I haven't opened up the heel part yet, but I'm just going to keep knitting because of the way this yarn is. I'm just going to keep knitting until it's as long as I want it to be because it's already divided up into two balls. So there's actually kind of a lot here. So this could be a very long sock. I don't know. 
I haven't decided I can just stop whenever I want because um, the other ball is already separated for doing the other sock and it starts at the same spot. And I think I forgot to say that this is the Artistic Yarns by Abby, which is the Dragon Fruit socks, which are really cool too. And I love um, using these kinds of yarns because they are just so addictive. You just want to keep, you just say, oh, I'm going to just knit to the next little section. And then that section's so little, you're just like, oh, I'm just going to knit to the next little section. And I don't know why, but it's just, it's weird, but it's very satisfying. And I know I'm not the only person that thinks that. So, so it's just a funny thing, isn't it? Um, so those are my socks and I have another exciting development. Oh, did I forget to bring something upstairs? Ah, my dye studio is right below. Um, in the, I have a basement dye studio. I forgot to bring up something else. So I wanted to talk about my sorrel. I started my sorrel sweater. I finished, I figured out my fade, my four skeins that are going to be the fade. That's what I left down below. So I will show, I will have to go get that to show you, but let me show you my progress. This is my progress on the yoke and I'm so excited with how it is turning out. I think it looks really, really pretty. I think it's gonna go really well with jeans. It's got this navy mohair. Um, and then I'm using my first colorway of the fade. And this colorway, I've got to find a name for this colorway because I decided to bring it to the shop for everybody on a few different bases because it's such, it's such a good color. I love it because it's this, um, this kind of bright springy but neon-y speckle with just kind of really basic teal, hot pink, yellow, um, like a bright neon yellow. It's got a little bit of orange where the pink mixed with the yellow um, and some green too, where the green is where like the teal and the yellow mix. So it's really a primary, it's kind of primary, but it's um, all of the white in it makes it really, I think a very useful yarn in a lot of projects. I've always really enjoyed working with um, the speckles that have a lot of white in them because I feel like it's less overwhelming sometimes. I mean, I love all speckles, but the projects that I've used yarns like this in are beautiful because they almost look from far away more white or neutral. And then when you get up close, you see all the speckles. But it works also really well when you're holding it together with the navy, which completely changes the look of the yarn. It brings out, like you can still see all those fun colors, but on a black, on a dark background. So I'm using my navy, definitely navy mohair, which is so soft and luscious. It's really very soft, especially with this stitch. It's something about this stitch is so much loft to it. It's really an interesting, I think the back looks really cool too. There's a lot of air in this fabric because of the way the stitch is done. So it's super lofty. Um, I'm really excited about this sweater and it's it's a very slow stitch to do. I can, I've can heard a few other people saying that. There are a lot of people knitting this and it's fun, so much fun to see everybody's versions and I'm so happy I'm doing it when so many people are doing it. So I encourage everyone to cast on. It's fun to have just such a huge community group doing the same sweater. Oh, I did decide, I was worried about the high neck because it has a two inch rib at the neck and it looked like it was very close fitting. So what I did was I didn't go down the needle size like it says. I, went, I just went in with the, the needle that you're using for the whole body. So I think it's a six. I went up a needle size too because I did a gauge swatch. And I only did one inch of rib. And I think that will solve my problem. It's a very, I did a stretchy cast on. So it's very stretchy. When I block it, I'm going to block it so that it's not very close fitting. Because I still really like the look of the original sweater, but I don't want... Um, just to be constrained with mohair doesn't seem like a very wise choice for myself. Um, so I decided to do that and I think it will work. I actually, ha I did slip this over my head like when I was just hanging out with my daughter, but I didn't like go look in the mirror and see how it works. Um, I just wanted to see if it would go over my head easily and it did. Even with these needles, I had to hold it you know, carefully so that it didn't come off the needles. But anyway, I'm so excited, it's hard to put down. I mean, even though it's a very slow, the one row, you, it's really like there's one very tricky row where you're doing, you're kind of doing this, this really dramatic stitch. 
And then there are lots of rows kind of just to back it up and pin it down and all of that. Those are pretty simple. Um, that one row takes me a very long time to get around though. But it's only every such and such, you know, it's not, it's maybe every, I forget now, like six row or something like that. So it's, um, I just think it's a gorgeous stitch though. So it's worth it. And I'm gonna be, but I will be excited once I get that whole yoke done and then I can just knit and knit. And it's, um, I was happy I went up a size. One good thing about swatching is sometimes you have to go up a size needle. And then the needle, the, the sweater isn't gonna take you as long. So it's really um, an, one of the benefits like that I don't often think of. Like when I don't feel like swatching, I sort of think, oh, I'll just go in. But when you get to go up a needle size, it saves you some time. So that's a good thing. Um, that I think was all I was gonna say about that, except I do wanna show the, um, the fade that I dyed for that. So I'll be right back. Hey, I'm back. Um, I decided to put back, put my cowl back on because it's just so fun that I finished. Um, so I want to show you the fade that I ended up going, deciding, dyeing. It took me a while to get all of these colors the way that I wanted to because I'm not used to dyeing. I'm not used to dyeing speckled fades. So it's a, it was a fun challenge and a good learning experience for me. And these are all going to be repeatable colorways that I am going to put into my shop at least for a while. And then I'll offer this kit as a fade as well. So right now, this is the first colorway, the one that I'm using right now. And I need a name, I need to come up with a name for this. So if you have any clever, fun suggestions, please comment, because I do wanna list this um, very soon. So that's one. I actually did this on a variety of bases, so I'll show you that when I get to the shop update section. This was just a, a, another one that I dyed. It's exactly the same as the one that I'm using. Um, then I went with this one, which is a little more, I wonder if this is gonna show up that well. You can see actually that there's a lot less white in it, but there's still some. So all of the colors in this are kind of just more spread out. So that's the second, second part of the fade. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, so you can see one goes lighter, a little bit darker. Then I kind of move, want to move towards a more bluish, color that's a little bit darker, but also very close to this one. I think it's easier if I'll show you with them all at the end uh, together. But so this is light is lighter, but this, this is lighter. Um, this is a little more dark and it also has a lot more blue in it. And then the third one is this really dark speckle, which I think is really pretty too. So all three together, let's see if I can hold them all together, create this beautiful fade. And right now I have this, um, is gonna be in my shop very soon. I'll have to come up with a name, but um, if you guys can come up with, if you have any suggestions for any of the names, I don't have names in mind yet, um, let me know because I only have this one ready to list, um, but I plan to do these all. Um, as repeatable colors and then to offer this as a kit as well because I think it's really really pretty I was so happy that I you know it was a little trial and error but I did finally get it um so that'll be interesting to see how that turns out with my um the mohair that goes with it so I think it's going to be really pretty all together uh, so that's my sorrel saga for the week. I, I had fun doing it though. Okay, so I think that's it for my works in progress. Um, but I definitely have some ideas for what I really want to start this week. I had already talked about wanting to do the speckle and pop shawl, something that I've been wanting to do for years since I missed that Stephen West mystery knit along. It was, I missed a couple. Um, I did figure out, I think I mentioned it last time, um, that I have done nine Stephen West shawls now. Um, so I was like, I'm going to finally do the speckle and pop shawl. But I have the pattern printed out and I've got, um, I hadn't really picked my colors. But then he came out with, the other day, a brand new shawl that is amazing. Um, and I'm talking about the Fantastic Stitch, Fantastic Stitch shawl which I saw and I just thought, 
It is so beautiful. It looks like so much fun. So I think what I'm gonna do, I may have um, accidentally bought a pattern. Not accidentally really, but it's Stephen West's new pattern, which is so, the shawl is so pretty, especially in these colors. So I am thinking that maybe it would be fun to wait to do the speckle and pop shawl and do this shawl. Um, especially because I think it is a fantastic looking pattern. I did look through it and it just looks like so much fun with all these different sections of color. I think it has seven or, let me see how many colors it has. Yeah, seven colors. Um, and they're not, I'm, I'm not going to do the large shawl, but there's a small and a large and the small is 78 inch wingspan, which to me is pretty large or it's a good size. Um, I like shawls that aren't huge. So I think I'll do the small size and the amounts for each, um, color aren't huge. So they really are great. Um, if you have a big stash or, you know, leftovers from other projects. I think I will do that. I do have a couple of skeins of some other dyers yarn that I would love to incorporate in this. So I'm already, um, I was putting together some yarns downstairs and I think I have a couple other dyers. I don't know for sure, I shouldn't even say. I'm not even sure yet what colors I wanna do, but um, I do wanna do something colorful because I just feel like Stephen West's shawls are really, um, to me, that's part of the fun is that you can use a lot of colors. So. I think I'm going to do this. I just, I did buy the pattern last night and I just, um, I think it is really fun to do these patterns while they're like in people's minds and a lot of people are casting them on. And I think that's just part of the knitting community that I love is like sharing, um, your progress with each other when a lot of people are knitting them at the same time. So I'm going to have to put my speckle and pop shawl on hold and move, um, that, back down my queue and move, I moved this up to near the top. So that's what I'm going to be doing soon. And I think I will probably cast that on this week because I finished this. It's time to move to the shop update section. So I already showed you my fade colors. Um, this was the first one again. And what's exciting is that, let me get rid of, I'm sorry, I have a lot in my basket to, to share. Um, in the shop update this week. So here are, here are, this is the, the one I don't have a name for yet, so I feel funny um, talking about it, but here it is on a few different bases that I dyed up. And I just think it is so pretty on each of these bases. Is that what I have? Yeah, that's, nope, I've got one more. So I dyed it on five different bases. I, I'll just show you one at a time. This is the ply fingering that I'm using. So I already showed you that. It's a great 100% um, merino superwash that I love. Then I also did it on the mohair, which is so pretty with all of these colors. Let me un undo it because I think that it's really, sometimes it's hard to tell when it's in skein form. It looks quite different when you take it apart but this is, I love the way the mohair takes these speckles because it's so different. They really spread out. Um, but it's such an absorbent yarn too. So it gets all through and it's set, got that beautiful, I don't know if you can see the shimmery silk in there with this mohair is beautiful. Um, I did it on the slub yarn, which I think is so much fun because the way the slub takes the color is super fun. Like sometimes it'll just be like all in one little bobbly slub. Um, look at that one. I mean, it's really fun to do the speckles on this. So there's that one. I love always the way it looks on the bulky single. It's just super fun to see how it turns out on all these different bases. And I have it on the skinny single 100% superwash merino as well. So that's really gorgeous. And I don't know what, I, I will come up with a name for this. Um, 
but like I said, l let me know your suggestions, maybe for the other three, because I do need, I need to, um, no names for those. Those aren't ready to list, but these are. So I'm going to be listing these. These should be ready by the time you see this video and in my shop. Um, and then there's a funny story too. So when I was dyeing yarn at the same time, I was trying to dye, what was I trying? I don't even remember now what I was trying to do. Um, but I ended up dying this yarn that I thought was going to be a total disaster. And I was like, oh, it looked exactly, it looked so similar to my Valentine colors that I had done. And I was like, I don't want to do another Valentine color. I want like something different. So I just kind of got frustrated and I did some black speckles over all of it. And then I thought it looked, this is while it was wet and steaming. I was like, this is a total disaster. Like this yarn is just ruined. Um, but the thing that's so much fun about dyeing is that you don't know what it's going to look like until it's dry because things lighten up. It just changes so much. Well, some of the colors completely change while they're steaming too. Um, so I couldn't believe I was so excited when I pulled this out of the drying closet and it is so gorgeous. So I decided it's very gorgeous and I decided to call it Dark Fairy because it's so magical. And this is on four different really cool bases. Um, and this is a repeatable colorway for my shop. I really think this is very, this would be a beautiful Valentine, I mean, um, Halloween color, I think. Um, but I did it now. And I love these colors all, all the time anyway. Um, so it's kind of a dark Easter fairy color, I think. And the bases that this is available on are my bulky single, which I just can't help it. I love this base. I also have a ply bulky, which I just never dye stuff on. And it's a, people order it a lot and it's also very pretty, but I'm very into singles. Let me show you what this looks like when it's unwound, because the reason I love single yarn so much is that it just has in each little section, especially the bulky, you can see like all the different colors and shades and it just gets, the way that it takes the dye is really beautiful. Um, anyway, I love that one. I have my Ply DK, which is my very wonderful basic, same thing I used for this, the same base. Um, I need to wind these all up again now. Then I did it on my sparkle sock, sparkle fingering base, which is so pretty. And you can see the sparkles are actually showing up on camera. Sometimes they don't show up well in photographs, but it seems like it's working well for the video. That's a really great yarn. And then this is a new yarn that my club members have gotten. Many of my club members have gotten this yarn. If, if you have, so at my club, you're allowed, you have the option of choosing all one yarn base if you wish, or you can get a variety. And this was a, one of the varieties that I did recently. I think it was maybe two months ago. And it's a um, nep, a white nep superwash merino. So that has these neps are made, I think, I need to look, I think it's nylon, but just so there's a little bit of nylon content in here but the neps are white, so they don't take the dye. It must not be nylon, because nylon would take the dye. I have to look and see what it is. Um, it could be cotton. Because cotton doesn't take the dye that I use the same way. Anyways, it's a pretty, it's a really neat textured yarn. This would be kind of fun actually to use in the Stephen West shawl I was talking about, because some of the yarns that he suggests have some texture to them. So I think it's kind of fun to do that. And I have so many solids, semi-solids and solids, and I have a lot dyed up right now. So I wanted to just highlight a couple that would go with those two yarns. This is super popular. This is my brightest, brightest pink called Pop at Nothing. And it's, let me turn it this way so you can really see. It's so bright that it like blows out whenever you take a picture of it. But I think this paired with this, is amazing. This is on several different bases in my shop. I have it on a sparkle base right now. Um, it can be dyed onto any base, but I have some in my shop ready to ship. So this is 
the bulky single, the sparkle fingering, and the mohair. And it's just such a bright, beautiful color. The other color I wanted to highlight is this boysenberry color, which is so pretty. Um, this is this is the way it looks on three different bases that I have. It actually looks kind of different on different bases. It actually is a very hard color to capture on camera. It looks much more red on the screen that I'm seeing, that you're seeing. Um, it's a little more purpley like a little more blue in it actually than it's showing up. It's so interesting. Purple's the hardest color to photograph, I think. Um, I think this looks fantastic with this, the two together. They're very moody together. Um, and I have several skeins of this in the shop right now. I've got, this is my single, single fingering. Um, this is a really, oh, this here's my bulky single that I love. And then this is a really beautiful base that I dyed this up just for special. Um, I don't, a lot of people haven't ordered this yet because I don't think they realize how pretty it is. It's a, it's a lace, um, sparkle lace made of alpaca, silk, and cashmere. So it's 65% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere, and then 5% silver stellina in there. So you can see it sparkles very subtle but beautiful and it's so soft and it's a lace weight. So it is, this is 50 grams, um, but you get uh, 460 meters or 420 yards. So it's a really large, um, it's great to carry along with a fingering weight. It, and if you do that together, that is basically a DK if you carry this along with a fingering. So, um, it's just a nice, another nice yarn. That's another, it's kind of another alternative actually to mohair um, or surrey. You can use it in place of that. So I just love this base. I've used this, um, I'll have to wear the sweater that I used this. This is running a little bit long and I don't want, um, I think I might just sort of start to wrap up because I, I talk a lot. Um, I just want to thank everybody so much uh, for all the love for Spencer. That was so nice. All the nice comments over on Instagram and on um, YouTube. He loved doing it. We had so much fun together in case you couldn't tell. We really, it was a great, funny experience to do that podcast with him. My daughter actually wants to do it too sometimes. So you can look for Chloe sometime soon. She said she would love to do it. So we'll see. Um, maybe another vacation coming up or something. And um, just finally, I finished Educated by Tara Westover and whoa, that is such a good audiobook. I highly recommend it. It's an incredible book. It's hard to believe that it's a true story. Um, it wouldn't be believable if it, if it was a fictional story, I think. Um, it has a great ending and I really recommend it. So you should look for that. I bought, I bought a couple of new audiobooks. They were having a sale over on Audible. Um, so I bought uh, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Spencer recommended that. He also recommended The Coincidence Makers. So I've got that. I think I'm going to list that one next because I, I kind of like to alternate between true stories, um, fiction and nonfiction. I just, uh, I like both. I know, I'm not like married to one genre. I love all the different genres. Um, but I do like to alternate them. So since I just listened to a true story, I think I'm, I'm ready for like a fiction story. So I'm going to listen to The Coincidence Makers next. Um, I also got Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. And what else did I get? Oh, Americana by uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but um, that book was recommended by Little Knits Podcast. Um, I'll have to look up her name. Um, we have similar taste because she had a whole list of books that she had read over the whole last year. And I had read several of them and loved the ones that she loved too. So I decided to get Americana, um, on her recommendation. Thank you so much for joining me again and have a great week and happy knitting. Bye. Let me just...